What's up, guys? It's your boy, Paul. I'm back with you. This is Pauline Theology, and I got a Christ and culture for you. COVID-19 is going down, man. So much stress, so much of this angst going around, and it is because of a disease that in our generation has not ever happened before, a pandemic. Everybody is on lockdown, and we're worried because we're spreading this disease. Well, I've got wise words from our brother in Christ, Martin Luther, and what he said during a kind of thing, the kind of the same thing that's going on here, except it was the Black Plague. And this is what he has to speak about it. Now, I want to talk first a little bit about the Black Plague and how it just ravaged and destroyed Europe, man. It just killed so many people. I watched a video the other day on YouTube and it showed literally stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks of death in comparison to all other diseases that have ever happened on the face of this earth, man. It was so massive. It was almost like double the amount of the highest one, which was, I think, like fluenza or something like that. So this is a very big problem in this, man. It just uh, reminds me of being a kid and singing, pocket full of posies, ashes, ashes, we all fall down. That's the Black Plague, man. They got songs about that. That we still sing today, that's how devastatingly crazy it is. But also how far from our minds that this actually happened, that we sing it as kids as a happy song instead of a song of terror. That's crazy, man. But Luther, during this time, was asked a question. What should we do? Should we run? Should we take off? Because this is scary. We could die. And Luther, after a while of hearing this from a lot of people, decided to write back. And what he said was pretty powerful. Now, I know that we can't run. This is a pandemic. It's everywhere. His was an epidemic where it just killed over a long period of time, but didn't spread everywhere. Ours is a pandemic, but he still has wise words for us today. So I'm going to go ahead and read this to you because it's so powerful. So powerful. So where I'm going to read at is he goes into talking about some people say that, well, we don't need to take medicine or we don't need to to run, or we don't need to do any of this stuff because the power of Jesus will take care of us. Now, he believes this, but he also believes in the uh, imminent power of God where we God uses ordinary means to sustain us. And so let me read this. It says, Not so, my dear friend. That would not be well done. Use medicine. Take whatever may be helpful to you. Fumigate your houses, your yards, your streets. Avoid persons and places where you are not needed or where your neighbor has recovered. Act as one who would like to help out. Put a general fire. What is the pestilence after all but a fire which consumes body, life instead of wood and straw? Meanwhile, think thus. With God's permission, the enemy has sent poison and deadly dung among us. And so I will pray to God that he may be gracious and preserve us. Then I will fumigate to purify the air, give and take medicine and avoid places and persons where I not need in order that I may not abuse myself, that through me others may not be infected and inflamed with the result that I become the cause of their death through my negligence. If God wishes to take me, he will be able to find me. At least I have done what he has given me to do and am responsible neither for my own death nor the death of others. But if my neighbor needs me, I shall avoid neither person nor place, but feel free to visit and help them, as has already been said, because this is the true and God-fearing faith, which is neither full-heartedly nor rash and does not tempt God. Man, I think it's important for us to look at at what Luther said in this way. He says, don't hurt anybody. If you are not needed in an area, then don't go. If you are not needed in a place, don't go. But if your neighbor needs you, then you at the risk of your life, being a Christian saying, love thy neighbor, we should go. We should help them. We should aid them in whatever they need. But if they don't need us, then we ought not leave. And when he says fumigate your houses, fumigate your yards, that's him saying, I believe in the same way right now. It's like, stay in your house. Stay at your home. Quarantine yourself. But if you see a neighbor that's in need, then don't quarantine yourself to the negligence of your neighbor. 
In the same way, don't go out and, and exercise and all this stuff out there in the world to the negligence of your neighbor. Now, it's fine to do all these things because it's great to maintain a lifestyle during this time. But we do not want to infect others because when we do that, we put that responsibility of even even their death is on us. But we're here to give life as Christians, man. I think he does this, too, in particular for uh, two important reasons. One is because we're free as Christians. That means as we have faith in Christ and Christ has wrapped us with his love, that we are free of the obligations of the law. But the obligation that God has given us with his spirit and power is to love our neighbor. And so as ourselves, we don't want to get sick, so we don't want to get anybody else sick. But if we are sick, we want others to aid us and help us in whatever way we can, whether it's money, food, company, or whatever it is. And so in the same way, we should love our neighbor. And then secondly, it comes off of a theology of the cross. It's where Christ has suffered for us. And so therefore, we as well must suffer with Christ. And so even in a bad time like this, when we feel like we shouldn't uh, be able to get out and do all the things we want, well, we should suffer for the benefit of our neighbor. We should stay at home, quarantine ourselves, watch Netflix, read our Bible, do some studying for the benefit of our neighbor. This suffering is for the glory of God. And at the same time, if we see someone that's in need that needs help, then we can help them. We can leave and go and help them because we must suffer worrying about catching that disease, but suffer for the glory of God. I hope this helps, man. And it's pretty interesting that I read this in my class of the day, the one on epidemic. I was like, man, I ain't reading that, man. I don't need to check that out. We ain't living in no time like this. We got medicine. We got doctors. We got all this. And then God in his infinite wisdom, as he always does, bestowed on me this wonderful book that I can read because an epi- or not, I'm sorry, a pandemic has come. A sight that I never would have thought I would see. But I have words of wisdom through this book. And ultimately through the good book, the Bible. Appreciate you guys for watching, man. Hey. Glad you tuned in. Hope you keep on watching. Look at my other videos. I got a lot of stuff on reformers and their thinking about things and how they think about it. Also, some book reviews. If you like to read, check them out during the quarantine. Got a lot to do. Appreciate it again. This is Pauline Theology. See you guys in the next video.